Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is sum of subarray minimums. So in this question, we're given an integer array called DRR and we have to find the sum of min of B where B is every range over every contiguous subarray of ARR. So we have to calculate all the subarrays of the given integer array ARR and we have to find the minimum among all of those subarrays and add them. So let's take these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the same input given to us. This is the input array. The brute force approach to this is to find the all the subarrays. So we take two for loops, i and j pointer, and j will keep moving forward. So first you take 3, then you take 3, 1, and then you take 3, 1, 2, and then you take 3, 1, 4. And in the next iteration, I will move forward and j will be resetted back to i. And in the next iteration, I will start from here, j will start from here. You take the first index, you take the next two, you then you take these three. Next, I will keep moving forward and j will start here. Then you get these two subarrays and the last index i and j will be here and there is no need to move forward and you get this subarray. To find all these subarrays, it will take O of n squared time complexity. And then again, while finding each subarray inside this only, you have to find the minimum element in, the, in that subarray. This will take O of n. So total, the time complexity is going to be O of n cube. And since the constraints are large in this question, this will give you a TLE. You can optimize this to O of n square by keeping track of the minimum element while forming the subarray itself. But this will also give you a TLE. Now let's see what output we're going to get. So these are the subarrays. Let's underline the minimum element in all the subarrays. The minimum is 3, minimum is 1, minimum is 1, minimum is 1. Here 1, 1, 1, here it's 2, 2, and here it's 4. Now if you add all of them, you will get 3 plus 3 ones. And here again 3 ones. And here again plus 2, plus 2, and here plus 4. And if you sum this, you will get 17. So 17 is our output for this question, which is matching the expected output here. Now, instead of finding all these subarrays, you can observe one thing in common that wherever there is one, that is going to be the minimum element among that. So our task will be to count what are the subarrays which has one inside it. So here, as you can see, these many subarrays, six subarrays are going to have minimum element one. Find the next minimum element. Next minimum element is 2. Find the subarrays where 2 is the minimum element and 1 is not the minimum element. And these are the two subarrays. So there are two subarrays which have minimum element 2. And the next minimum element is 3. Find the subarrays which are going to have 3 as the minimum element and not 1 and 2. There is only one subarray which has 3 as the minimum element. And similarly for 4, this is the only subarray which has 4 as the minimum element. So there are 6 subarrays which are going to have 1 as the minimum element. So 6 into 1 is going to be the sum of those 6 subarrays. You can find them here. And here, 2 subarrays are going to have 2 as the minimum element. So you have 4. You can find them here. And there is 1 subarray with 3. You can find it here. 1 into 3. And 1 subarray with minimum element 4. So 1 into 4. Now add all of them. 6 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4. Which sums up to 17. Which is matching here. So that will be our task to find out how many subarrays are going to have with the current minimum element starting from 1 until the end. So until the range 1 through 4, we have to find out all the subarrays which are going to have 1 as the minimum element, 2 as the minimum element, 3 as the minimum element, 4 as the minimum element. Because there will be at least one subarray consisting of that element only which has that as its minimum element. So for that we are going to find out the left next smaller element and the right next smaller element for every index inside the input array ARR. So let me draw the two arrays. So the first one is going to be the left next smaller subarray and the second one is going to be the right next smaller subarray. So we iterate through the input from left to right. So we start with the first index. We are at 0 and that element is 3. What is the smaller element to its left? There is nothing. So the index position is minus 1, right? So for left subarray, if there is no element to its left, we will assign minus 1 to it. Now let's pick this element. What is the smaller element to the left of index 1? There is no smaller element. So again, assign its index position minus 1. What is the smaller element for 2? So the current element is 2. Next left smaller element is 1 and its index position is 1. So add this index position into this. Index position is 1. And now we are at this element. The element is 4. The next left smaller element from the beginning to that is at index position 2. So add that index position here. Now we fill the left next smaller array. Now we have to fill the right next smaller array. 
For that, we have to iterate through the input array from right to left. So we start with the right index. So index position is 3. We check what element is present to its right. There is no smaller element to the right. So we take the index position 4, which is current index plus 1. So we add that index position for that element. So 4 will be added here. So mind you, this 4 is the index, not this element. Now the index position is 2 and the element is 2. Check the right range to that. What is the right next smaller element? There is no element smaller than 2 in the right. So add the index position 4. So 4 will be added here. Next index position is 1. We check 1. What is the smaller element the right of it? There is no smaller element to the right of it. So add this index position 4 to that. Now we are at 0 and the element is 3. Check the right range. 1 is the right next smaller element to 3 and its index position is 1. So add this index position 1 here. So these two arrays are going to store the index positions of the next smaller to the left or right of that element. Now we have both the arrays ready. Now our task is to implement this logic, right? How many subarrays are there with the minimum elements? Instead of finding all the subarrays and find the minimum element among them, we are going to implement this. Now let's see how we can achieve that using these two arrays. So let me draw a table and we'll get a clear idea for that. So first we are going to take the ARR of i, the element. The elements are 3, 1 and 2. So write them 3, 1 and 2 and 4. So the first, second column is going to store how many number of elements are there to the left which are smaller than the current element. And here I'm going to find out how many right smaller elements are there that to the current element. And here let us form the subarrays. And here I'm going to find out the product that is these numbers 2, 4, 3 and 4. And finally here I'm going to write the total sum. That will be the sum of these last column product. So here I'm going to write the total sum. It should match 17. So we are at index position here i. How many numbers are there which are smaller to that? So there is no number smaller to that. So the next smaller element you'll find at index position minus 1. So you can find out the distance between that by subtracting the current index minus index position of next smaller element. So this is the formula we have to apply to fill these columns. So current index is equal to 0, right? So 0 minus index position of next smaller is minus 1. So minus 1 which is equal to 1. So this 1 will represent the current element. 3. And now I will move forward. I is at 1. So how many elements are there to the left? Again, current index is 1 minus this index minus 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And now I will move forward. Now I is equal to 2. So current index is 2 minus index of the next smaller element. You can find out by this element which is 1. So 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Now I will move forward. Now i is equal to 3. So 3 minus the next smaller element's index which is at 2. So 2. So it is 1. Now we filled that. Let's do the same for the second column. So same formula. But first we have to subtract index position of next smaller to right minus current index. So let's do the same. i is in the beginning. i is equal to 0. So index position of right next smaller is 1. So 1 minus current element index is 0 it is 1. So 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. Now let's do the same. i is equal to 1. So index of right next smaller is at 4. So 4 minus current index is 1 is equal to 3. Now i is equal to 2. So index of right next smaller is 4 and current index is at 2. So 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. Now i will move forward. i is equal to 3. So 4 minus current index is 3 which is equal to 1. So now we have to multiply these two columns 1 into 1. So we get 1. Next you multiply 2 into 3, you get 6. Next you multiply 1 into 2, you get 2. Next you multiply 1 into 1, which is 1. So total there are 10 subarrays. So total sum you can find out by 3 into 1. So there is one subarray which is having minimum element 3. So that is this subarray. So that is 3 into 1 is equal to 3. Next there are 6 subarrays which are having minimum element 1. So those are the 6 subarrays are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are two subarrays with minimum element 2. And those two subarrays are here. And there is one subarray which is having minimum element 4 and that is here. So here you can find the product by doing 6 into 1 because minimum element is 1 in all these 6. So 6 into 1 is equal to 6. Minimum element 2 is 2. So 2 into 2 which is equal to 4. And here there is one subarray with 4 as minimum element. So 4 into 1, 4. So 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 17. 
So this 17 is matching our expected output here. Now this is the high level view of what is going to happen in the code. Now let us implement how we are going to fill the left neck smaller and right neck smaller arrays. For that we can use stacks to find the next left smaller and right neck smaller element for all the indexes present inside the input array ARR. And for each index position we store that inside two arrays. So let's see how we can do that. So I've taken the same input array. Now let's start by filling the first array left neck smaller and then we'll fill this. For that we are going to use a stack. So stack will contain the index positions and then we are going to keep track of the left neck smaller's index position and iterate through the input array from left to right. So let's start our iterations from left to right. We pick the first element. We have to find the left index position. So here the left index position is minus one and there is nothing smaller to that. So since stack is empty, there is nothing to be compared. So minus one will be the next smaller index for element three. So this will represent the element three. So index position is minus one. And in each iteration we have to, since we process this index, so push that index into the stack. So index is zero. And now we move forward. Now our stack is not equal to empty. We have to check the index position at this. So ARR of zero is equal to three. This three will be compared with this element one. So if I take that element three, and we take one. Since three is greater than one, this is not qualified as a smaller element. So pop that index in from the stack. And now since stack is empty, there is no more comparisons to be made inside the stack. So it means we haven't found any index positions to its left within the bound. So add the leftmost index position that is minus one. And since we process that element, add that index position which we are currently in. So we are at one, right? So add that into the stack and now move forward. Pick that index since stack is not equal to empty. Here are of one, is equal to one and compare this element. So we take the element from the stack one and the current element two. Check if one is greater than two. So it means we have found the next smaller index position, which is in the stack. So pop this from the stack and add it here. So this will go here. So one is added here. And since we process that element, add its index position to the stack and move forward. Now pick that index two. Error of two is equal to two. Check if two is greater than the current element that is four. No. So it means we have found the next smaller index to its left for the current element. So this two will be moved here. And since we process that index, add that index into the stack and move forward. And since we move forward and we came out of bounds, we have filled the first array. Now we have to do the same for the second array. So empty the stack and we have to re repeat the process. But while repeating the process, now we have to start filling from right to left. So we start from the last element because we have to compare elements to its right. Since the stack is empty, there is nothing to compare. So we have to add the default index, which is the index position to its right. Length minus one plus one, which is length. So add length to the index position, which is four. So this index will be four. And since we process this element, so add its index position three into the stack and move to the left. ARR of three is equal to four. So four and the current element two. Check if four is greater than two. Yes, four is greater than two. So remove that index from the stack. And now since the stack is empty, we have to add its default index, which is four as its current element. Because as you can see, there is no smaller element than two to its right. So we add this four as that index position for that two. And since we processed two, which is that index position two, so add this two index position into the stack and move to the left. Now pick this element, error of two is equal to two and current element is one. So two and one. Check if two is greater than one, yes. So it is not the next smaller element. So pop that index. And since stack is empty, it means we haven't found any smaller element for one to its right. So we add its default index four as the index position for that. And since we process that index, add it into the stack for the next iteration and move to the left. Now pick that index, error of one is equal to one one and the current element is three. Check if one is greater than three, no. So for that current element, the next smaller element is at index position, which is present inside the stack. So this will go here. So it means for three, the next smaller element is present at index position one, which is right, because one is present at index position one. That is the first next smaller element to its right. And since we process that element, add its index zero and move forward. Once we move forward, we come out of bounds. It means we have filled the right next smaller array. Now this is the way you're going to find the smaller elements. And there is one more edge case to handle duplicates. For example, if there was two here and four here, 
for so all these sub arrays will have minimum 2 and for this 2 the left smaller is going to be 1 but here as you can see there is a overlap 2 comma 4 comma 2 is going to come in this and also here 2 comma 4 comma 2 but we have to take only one so just we can eliminate one bound in either this array or this array so in one array we have to compare strictly greater and in one you have to compare strictly greater than equal to here while comparing the peak element so one will be greater than one will be greater than equal to the so this is how you can eliminate this i'll show you during code how you can do this and one more important thing is that for right index we have to pick four why are we picking four as the default index while filling right and why are we picking minus one as the default index while filling left array is that because this distance is important for us to calculate the left distance and this distance is important for us to calculate the right distance so that is why 4 will give you the correct number of elements present between that and 1 minus 1 is going to give you the correct distance between the number of elements present between that so that is why left index and right index are minus 1 and 4 respectively so that you get the correct distance between them now let's implement these steps in a java program coming to the function given to us this is the function name this is the return type integer representing the sum of sub array minimums and this is the input arr given to us so first let's start off by finding out the length of the input array next we have to create the two arrays of the same length as arr the first array is going to store the left smaller element from that current element. So first let's create the first array left next smaller and to find out this I'm going to create a helper function which will return an integer array. So I'll call the helper function here. I'm going to name it find left next smaller and I'm going to pass the integer array arr and also the length as parameters. Now I'll copy this once and do the same for the second array. I'm going to name it right next smaller and for that I'm going to write another helper function find right next smaller and now let's declare the modulus because we have to return the answer with modulo so int mod is equal to 10 power 9 this value now let's iterate through the input array arr from left to right using a for loop and now for every element inside this arr array I have to calculate the left distance by getting the value from this array so I'll name it left distance so long left distance so to find out the le next left smaller element we have to subtract i minus the left next smaller index so i minus whatever this array consists of for that element and now we have to calculate the right distance I'm going to name it right distance the index position present inside this right distance of i minus the index position i this will give us the distance and now to find the total number of ways we have to multiply left distance into right distance right so long total ways is equal to left distance into right distance so these many sub arrays are going to have the current minimum element so to get the value of that we have to multiply this total ways into the current array element so arr of i into total ways will give you the current sum so let's store it inside a variable current sum so total number of ways into arr of i so we found the current sum and we have to add it to the total sum which will be our output right so let's declare a variable total sum and initially it will be zero and into this total sum i will add the current sum so this actually means total sum is equal to total sum plus current sum right so for that we have to apply this mod so let us write it like this total sum is equal to total sum plus current sum and to this sum first we'll apply mod and then we'll store it inside total sum and finally outside we will return total sum but total sum here is long but we need an integer as the return type so typecast it so in total sum now we have to implement these functions find left next smaller and find right next smaller so let's start off with this function so it is a private helper function so this function's output is being stored inside an integer array so this function's return type should be an integer array and the parameters are an integer array and the length so int arr and int length 
now this return type is an integer array right so let us create that i'm going to name it result and it will be of the same length as the integer array arr which is being stored inside this variable length so new int of length to find out the left next smaller element we have to use a stack right so i'll create a stack which will store integers now let's iterate through the integer array arr using a for loop so it will start from index position 0 i is equal to 0 until the length so we are iterating through the integer array from left to right to find the left next smaller to find the right next smaller we have to iterate from right to left that will implement inside this function first we have to check if stack is empty so if stack dot is empty so if the stack is empty it means that for the current element the left next smaller element is at index position minus 1 so result of i should store minus 1 so result of i is equal to minus 1 and in the else block it means stack is not empty so we have to compare the top element so inside the stack we are going to store index positions right so we have to retrieve the top element from the stack that is the index position and that index position value we have to compare it with the current element so why arr of stack dot peak is greater than the current element arr of i and we also have to check stack is not equal to empty so if stack is not equal to empty and the top element inside the stack is the index position so stack dot peak for that index position inside the arr that element we have to compare it with the current element so if that is the case we have to pop the element from the stack so stack dot pop so this will happen using a while loop so until this condition is true we'll keep removing the element from the stack that means we haven't found out any left smaller element yet so once you find the next smaller element you have to put that index position that is stack dot peak into result of i so result of i is equal to stack dot peak but there might be a case that you can't find any next smaller element and the stack is empty so only if stack is not empty we have to assign stack dot peak if stack is empty you have to assign minus one to it it means you haven't found out any next left smaller element using ternary operators first i'm going to check if stack is not equal to empty only we have to assign that else we have to assign minus one to that result of i and finally outside the for loop we have to return the result as the output because this is expecting a result as output so return result now this is the way you have to implement the find next left smaller function to implement this function find right next smaller so let's copy this and paste this once let's change the name from find left next smaller to find right next smaller and as i said to find the right next smaller element we have to iterate from right to left right so i will start from length minus 1 until i is greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus and if stack is empty we have to assign the next index position of the last index that is length right we are starting from length minus 1 that is the last index position of the array if you are not able to find next smaller element to the right you have to assign length index position to result of i right and also here if stack is empty we have to assign length not minus 1 so that is the only change you have to make now we have implemented the functions now we finish the code except one change like i said we have to handle duplicates right if there are duplicates this is a repeated line of code both the sub arrays will be considered in our output so if it is greater in both the cases it will take both the limits so in one limit you have to ignore it so here we can implement greater than or equal to and here you can just implement greater than so this will take the bound and this will not take the bound so this is the only change you have to implement to eliminate taking both the sub arrays which are duplicate now let's try to run the code we are getting the wrong output because we missed one step we are not pushing the index into the stack anyway so before starting the next iteration we always have to push the current index into the stack else always stack is going to be empty right so stack dot push of current index i let's do the same here too stack dot push of current index i else stack is always going to be empty now let's try to run the code again and the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and our solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n because we are iterating through the array once and the space complexity is also o of n because we are using a stack and also a result array 
to store our output. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.